for me now yoga has not just become yoga it's become life for me yeah. as in i can't see it just as a movement of hands and legs or the my father was asked to take me back home and finish my last wishes i was sore inside i was angry yeah I was angry about the whole thing of course i was angry about uh, me not being able to express what i really am there's a point in your practice where over a period of time you understand that uh, it's not it's not someone else who can create problem for you but you yeah so i'm nitesh sharma and today my guest is sandeep sandeep is a principal yoga teacher in amurtha bindu which is a very traditional style boutique yoga studio in bangalore he is also a advanced practitioner in martial art and a counselor so so good to hang out with you man thank you nitesh so take us back and start from the beginning like how did you get into this when i was 4 uh, years i guess 4 i don't know but uh, i had a fall and that led to uh, a disorder called as pyogenic meningitis yeah i was admitted at the hospital for about 3 and a half 4 months okay and uh, <clears throat> i was almost dead brain dead in fact i was asked to uh, you know was, uh, my father was asked to take me back home and finish my last wishes whoa Right, so that, that's where uh, it started. And do you remember all this now? I remember because the pain used to be very intense. So uh, I used to shout like the entire hospital could hear me shout. Yeah. Because they used to insert a long needle into the spine, and yeah. you know there's so many nerves there. Yeah. So the pain uh, used to be intense. and from uh, there even i remember things even before that but uh, from there my i think my memory became a little sharper and stronger so i could remember most of the things uh, and then how does that lead to martial arts and yoga i came out and uh, as things like this happen you come out weak and start uh, either feeling very weak and surrender or the opposite happens you you start to look out for things to make you strong yeah it's a defense mechanism right right so guess that's what led me to extreme physical activity at that point of time i used to have extreme physical activities of course it started slow my dad used to take me out and i uh, used to uh, you know be very physical in parks and uh, this one climb things mainly i i was interested in climbing wow so i used to climb walls at the 4 year of age yes okay yeah. you take go to parks you find those uh, poles yeah especially so in bangalore to, yes so i uh, used to climb all of those and um, stuff like that and then i was introduced to uh, judo very uh, <coughs> it was not very frequent that i used to go for classes but very few classes i used to uh, this one and i used to practice with i had a lot of uh, friends there i used to practice with all of my friends so how was this judo class was it in your school or uh it was not at school um my pt teacher was uh, um also a judo practitioner okay so i used to learn from him right um and i was uh, my we were not that well to do okay. after a point of time we couldn't afford uh, regular classes we couldn't afford uh, regular this one uh, so you were taking the private lessons from him private lessons okay. from him yeah and uh, <laughs> then afterwards when i became a little strong in that then uh, i contemplated but had a change of mind and uh, shifted to uh, kung fu okay right so did you recover in this four year of period did you completely recover from your injury or i was okay i could literally climb anything wow so you when you have to climb you need a lot of core power right, right. 
So, the two walls this way, with the house that we are living in, there is one house here, one house here, and literally this much space in between. Okay. So, I used to use my hands and I used to climb up to the terrace because we didn't have stairs. Oh, man. That's like a movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but then your motivation wasn't like to recover. You were already like in a normal health by the yes. time you get introduced to judo and all these things. Yes, but at the back of the mind, you know how it is for a survivor. Yeah. At the back of the mind, I did have the idea that I should never go back, I should never become weak. Uh, that was like injected very early in your brain? Very early, yes. Okay, so now you are learning judo from your PT teacher and then how things move from there? And uh, <clears throat> from there, uh, my seventh, seventh standard, I had to move to a different school. Because of your father had to move? Yeah, we had to change houses. Uh, there was a shift, shift in uh, the economical uh, condition of okay. uh, our house, if I could say that. And uh, we had to shift houses and I had to shift school. Okay. And uh, pretty much for even the basic things at school, I was not very, uh, I couldn't afford it. Even if, if it was a uh, school where my aunt worked and I got uh, scholarships and things like that. And uh, I had to shift from uh, English medium school to a Kannada medium school. Yeah, because of the economical reasons? Yes. I was studying in ICIC syllabus school, English medium. Okay. And from then I had to shift to a Kannada medium school in my seventh standard. One uh, thing was that it was difficult for me. Okay. Even though I speak Kannada at home, it was difficult to entirely learn everything in Kannada. Right, of course. And uh, I used to get ragged by the boys there. Um, Just because Though it so would, yeah. You can say I was borderline intelligent. Okay. And uh, even in Kannada medium school, I could uh, cope up with it. And they were not very happy with it because I could, in the I could talk in English and yeah. more, 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 most other things. You were invading their space. Yeah, <laughs> I was. I was clearly invading their space. They did not want me there. Of course. So there were uh, intense ragging uh, sessions, like 12, 13 boys after class. They used to uh, take whatever stones this and uh, hit, yeah. and I used to fight back. Uh, but as I was introduced to ethical fighting, I never used to hurt them. I tried to move away from them as much as possible. Amazing, man. So now you are uh, moving more towards the traditional judo and karate? Traditional judo and karate, yes. Uh, I studied with uh, wearing whatever kind of... Judo mainly works with the dress that you wear. Okay. Right? So uh, we used to... Yeah, I learned to fight manipulation. Yeah. Because uh, judo works mainly through manipulation. Right, right. Yeah. And then in uh, seventh was when I was introduced to orthodox training because of all of these things. And also because uh, I used to have difficulty with uh, uh, certain things like school dresses and all of these things. I used to skip school. Yeah. I used to go sit in a library and uh, read. And when I'm bored, when it's getting overwhelming reading, I used to go to Krishna Rao Park. The library was just opposite to Krishna Rao Park. Okay. So in Krishna Rao Park was when I met uh, my master. Just by chance? Yeah, he was practicing Tai Chi. Uh -huh. So I was like sitting and watching, I used to be mesmerized yeah. uh, by the movement, you know, the Plithe movement. And uh, I uh, started uh, watching. Initially, it was like an old man doing some crazy steps, and okay. slowly it made sense. Uh, I wanted to move. I started shadowing him. You did you go and talk to him, or no? You just, no. I started shadowing him. Okay. So you go to the same park every day just to yes. sort of see him. Yeah. Right. I started looking at the time and this one, and then. Uh, one day I asked and his English was broken 
Okay. He was a refugee from uh, Hong Kong. He fled from Hong Kong and settled down in Bangalore. Yeah. What is his name? <coughs> Yipin. 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 Okay. And he is like... Yipin Lee Chuang is his full name. Yeah. And he has been taught Tai Chi like a very, in, like a proper traditional way. His uh, ancestor. It came from... Uh, like in a very... Nice yeah. P parent to son to parent to son to parent. So now, so now you are being introduced to like the real, yes, physical. Yeah. So he was uh, pretty much real. No, no belts. No this one. No, nothing. And yeah. he never taught anyone. Okay. So I asked him, and he said, "Okay, fine. Uh, uh, you can learn for some time." He said, uh, "How will you learn? You have to go to school. All of these." And yeah. then there was a time when I. Uh, when I started this, I continuously bugged school for two months. Yeah, you didn't get into trouble? <laughs> I got into trouble. My mother came and then they put me back into school. But I managed to go in the evenings and start uh, learning. It was a huge ego test for me because I was strong. Okay. Or I thought I was strong. Okay. And, uh, and you're winning all these trophies and everything in the school also. Yeah. So, I had an ego problem with that okay. and uh, I used to climb, I used to climb very well and then when I was uh, the first day of class, he stayed pretty much close to school in NR colony. Okay. So first day of class I was asked what can I do well, I was the only student okay. and he was doing his own work and then he said what can you do, what can you do well. Right. Everything. <laughs> I said I can climb. Okay. It's my strength. I can climb. Because I didn't want to tell anything. I can punch or this or that because he was. Uh, I knew he was quite strong. Okay. So I chose this so that I can show what I can do. Okay. This because climbing is your main thing. Was your main thing. Yeah. Okay. I said okay. Climb the compound. I climbed. He said jump the other side. I jumped. He said do the same thing. And that climbing, jumping compounds became my practice for the next six, seven months. Oh. Nothing else than that. And that's how it went on, traditional teaching. Okay. By the time I could uh, realize, you know, I was very, very strong yeah. climbing because abdomen, you use abdomen. He used to occasionally give me tips on climbing, how you should not do this, you should do that. You know, it's not more of a technical thing. Yeah. To say, you should climb so that you're leg, your body does not touch as you climb, only your leg should touch the wall and all that. Uh, and then... Um, and your parents knew about this? No, because my parents didn't know about me bunking. Yeah. And I didn't have a very good relationship with my parents at that time. Okay. But you were very drawn to this thing, like eight months just climbing and jumping? Yeah, that I day. was frustrated too. I used to come back and I used to bitch about it to my friends, uh -huh. but he was very uh, okay, it was okay if I leave, so. Wow, man. So take us forward from there. Yeah, from there, uh, we, um, I pretty much kept practicing and uh, eighth standard, I bunked almost seven, eight months. So your bunking period is increasing with the time. Yes. Okay. So, because there was other economical reasons to it. Okay. Um, and did you have to pay your teacher? No. He was just teaching out of the goodwill. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't have to pay my teacher. So I spent most of the times there and uh, whatever little money I could uh, gather. Swimming was a very uh, important thing. He always encouraged me to swim. So I used to go to national college, swim, go practice there, go to the library, sit and read by myself. Uh, and how long this uh, you practiced with him? Uh, it went on till uh, when I was uh, 17 and a half, 18. Wow, more than 10 years? Yeah. More than 10 years you practiced under him? More than 10 years, him? yes. And did you get like, how does, how does this martial art and judo work? Did you get like a levels? Uh, <clears throat> usually when you go and study in a dojo outside, a dojo where uh, people train, uh, yeah. 
uh, now nowadays the belt system has been very this one every four months you can get a belt <laughs> okay sometimes uh, every two months people get belts right uh, so the grading system is very different uh, with the orthodox teachers there is no grading in right. fact when i first went out to fight uh, he gave me one of his one of the belts in a bag and said <laughs> okay go fight <laughs> nice so you did fighting and all these things that uh, orthodox like students are supposed did. to do i did and then i uh, <clears throat> this was my uh, uh, this was my first practice but i joined uh, taekwondo okay when i was 17 i joined taekwondo i didn't leave the practice i used to still do the practice uh, this was when i my schooling was quite different in 8 uh, after they came to know that i had bunked so many days um, they they took me out of school i started work you started working when you were yes. eight what you did uh, i used to work as a um with the painters i used to work as their helpers ah because you want to also support yourself yes be independent yes oh man so i chose to work and after after 8th you just sort of drop out and work yes and when did you start studies again yeah in uh, <clears throat> at the time of my 10th yeah uh, i was challenged by a boy uh, because i was we went to a house to work and the boy was in his 10th and uh, i was interested in books i was very interested in books okay i just took out his book and my hands were dirty and so things happened and he yeah. was challenged by him saying you know you can't Yeah, you don't touch your books you don't know what the this one of books are and all that and then i said i went to and enrolled myself uh, to a tuition okay 10th i applied uh, private exams okay and i went to a uh, tuition uh, teacher okay i studied with him for 2 months And, and again there was a problem of money right so you are sort of paying for yourself yes and then my dad fell sick okay and uh, he fell sick for a very long time so now you have to take the responsibility of your home also okay so i dropped out of the tuitions okay uh, in fact i was pushed out of the tuitions because i couldn't you get money pay, right 2 months 1 and 1/2 month i think i was in the tuitions okay then i studied myself I mean did you thought about teaching uh, martial arts in taekwondo at that time mm, i didn't have the time you know i used to work full time right from morning till evening yeah you you were working like full time at that time but did you were you, so how was your mind at that time would do do would you thinking like you would always be doing this like painting and just practicing and all these things or you have sort of a plan in your mind that because now you are not i didn't have a plan because i was uh, i was sore inside i was angry yeah i was angry about the whole thing of course i was angry about uh, me not being able to express what i really am because I used to work and I used to so much my schedule was like yeah. very different and uh, yeah it uh, went on smoothly like uh, I used to study 2 hours in the evening okay and as I started to study you know some 2 3 people from the tuition uh, started to come with me and study because they were in the same tuition for 2 3 years and they had not passed oh and a girl from the tuition uh, started helping me in my yeah. mathematics and science she used to bunk her class and come <laughs> and help i never told my at my home that i'm not going to tuitions okay because they would feel bad right so i used to sit out and study oh man uh, so this one one girl uh, used to come and teach me yeah in the park and i used to teach that to the other two boys who Wow, so it was a nice yeah friend circle you know i was um, when i was around 17 in the first year of my college uh, sort of the same thing happens with us my father fall down and we had like really financial suffocating situation 
and that was the time I was sort of exposed that I had to earn by myself if I want to support myself and I can see even at that age which was like 17, 18 which was much mature than where you were I was like going around and asking for a job in different places eventually I get into like graphic designing and start working as a freelancer and start supporting myself and sort of that independence that I can support myself start paying my tuition fees and everything but I cannot even imagine like if you had to do it if I had to do the same thing when I was in 8th grade how stressful that would be so um, studied in a browsing center and I worked in a browsing center I picked up odd jobs I part time I worked in a printing press okay folding papers and uh, uh, when I was still when I was 17, I got my job at Zenith Computers. It was with a dealer. Okay. A Zenith dealer. Right. And um, from there, I started uh, being exposed to a big, uh, this one of clients. Okay. <coughs> I was the youngest working then. Of course. 17. <laughs> uh, so I worked as a hardware engineer, network engineer. I did well. And you were supporting your family also at that time? Yeah, my dad uh, came back and he started working, but with a limited uh, yeah. ca capacity, and then we were all putting in stuff. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Right. It, it was difficult, but I think it was not bad. Right. And how did it help you to grow as a, as a person yourself? Then I started taekwondo. Okay. But you uh, continued your practice along the way. Yeah. You never left the practice. It was difficult at those times, you know, I had to leave uh, practice, I had to practice by myself. Right. But uh, I was good at self-practice, so ah. I still practice by myself. And then Taekwondo happened as I got relaxed a bit financially. Taekwondo happened, I used to go to Kantirova Stadium every morning. Okay. Uh, practice Taekwondo there and uh, side by side I practiced, uh, I picked up uh, Muay Thai. Oh yeah. yeah. So you are getting more and more deeper into this. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I kind of was looking at what do I want to do. Right. But it was martial arts for me. It was I wanted to be a martial arts teacher. Right. And at home, uh, mm, they were not really very cool with me uh, doing all of these things. Yeah. So I used to always uh, not tell them anything. I was right. kind of disconnected from home. Yeah. At that point of time, I was angry. Yeah. You know that, you know, you know the issues that. Uh, but, but you were expressing teenagers. your anger or you just keep it inside yourself? I used to express it uh, with my practice. Yeah. That so, became an outlet. Outlet, yes. To express and I think as it is. So you were really exploring every aspect that where do you fit really? Yeah. That was that was the time my anger came down. Okay. And now I was looking at settling. How does that anger came down? This this was the time when I was uh, there's a point in your practice where over a period of time you understand that uh, it's not it's not someone else who can create problem for you, but you. Yeah, and you realize that? Yeah. Wow. It was a time when I realized it and my anger came down. Yeah. My hatred towards everyone came down. Mm. And uh, How that you? was when I was uh, declared as a master. From By your teacher? Yeah. Wow. So this practice of martial art was also not just making you strong, but also keeping you... Um, bringing more clarity inside what is happening. That's right, because I uh, used to uh, study, I used to study Zen, Taoism uh, and all of these. Okay. Uh, it was more of a self-study, you know, you study and then whatever doubts you have, you go and ask uh, teachers. Um, I also got introduced to a Theravada Buddhist teacher. Wow, uh, and somehow you are getting like these really like good teachers. Teachers, not like yes. normal people who just know some things, but like people who really know. Really know, yes. Uh, <coughs> like Tibetan teacher. 
Okay. I uh, got introduced to uh, a Tibetan teacher. Uh, he was from Bail Kuppe in Mysore. Okay. So he used to come to Bangalore, and uh, I met him when I was in Zenith. Okay. So he had a laptop, but then, uh -huh. and then I used. Uh, then I was once introduced to repair his laptop. Okay. From there, I started asking my questions, and then Buddhism started. Awesome. All of these things started just that way. That way, like. Some you somehow be. Well I had questions is. and I started getting answers. That's it. Wow. And the teachers were my answers. Like you never planned these things, but they were coming and you sort of interacted with them. Yes. Amazing man. I had no time to plan. <laughs> you had no time to plan. Yeah. <laughs> but wow. So that period of time you were like getting more settled down. Also inside, your your anger was you were like figuring this out that the problem is really inside, and you were also dealing with that. And and from there, how did you move into yoga space? See, yoga happened to me because uh, of martial arts. Okay. Because I used to get uh, uh, bruised, hit, <laughs> so many things. And uh, even for flexibility, my teacher recommended uh, uh, this one, uh, yoga, okay. as a practice. But I didn't have too much time to do yoga. Of course. So I picked up... Um, uh, an evening practice, I picked up an evening practice. And where did you pick that up? I studied in uh, in Vanshankri third stage, it was done in his home, yeah. Srivatsa, uh, his name is uh, Srivatsa. He was also like an orthodox teacher? He was an orthodox teacher, yeah, it was done right. at home. I was, one is, one benefit of an orthodox teacher is you pay less. Yeah, <laughs> if you have to pay. <laughs> if you have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one is uh, the teaching is in line with what you are learning already. Yeah. So you don't have to start afresh. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There is a huge difference when you learn from somebody who knows all the aspects of the teaching. Yeah. It's, he just customizes everything for you. Yes. So, right. I had no interest in uh, um, yoga practice at that, that time. You were just doing it to make it more flexible and make it more comfortable yeah. for you. How did that move? Because power yoga became famous, yeah. and uh, I started teaching powerful yoga, but not really power yoga. I yeah, didn't yeah. know about vinyasa and all of those things. That <laughs> so time. you were pushing. At that time. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, teaching something as yoga, so using uh, put in strong asanas together, virabhadrasana, all of these yeah, strong yeah. posts. <laughs> and how long you are talking? What age you were at that time? Uh, this is in two thousand. Uh, Seven ending, almost ten years there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then my other versions of uh, yoga was good. The power yoga part of it was not very good. Yeah. So learned uh, there on the job. Learned most of it. Yeah. Six seven months when Pradeep started teaching there. Pradeep also started teaching there in the same place. Thousand. Okay. Yoga. So uh, that's where Pradeep said. Uh, you know, you do, why don't you do a course with us? Okay. So I did a course with uh, Pradeep at Atmayan. Okay. So that was your first yoga teacher training around 10 years back? Yeah. And take us forward, like it, there must be a lot happened over that period of the 10 years. Now you are sort of uh, the principal teacher yourself mm -hmm. and you have your own studio. And so what happened in this 10 years? Just in here, nothing, you know, I started there and worked uh, freelance, you, you taught about 11 classes, 12 classes a day. Okay. You have <laughs> always been like very hardcore sort of person, right? Like always everything. And then uh, Pradeep started his own uh, place called uh, the Thousand Yoga. Yoga. So we were, we, were, we were one of the first teachers in, okay. invited to it. So I started teaching at Thousand Yoga. And did you learn from some other places? I did, yeah. After that, uh, uh, after that, in my um, transition period, I went and I studied at uh, KYM Krishnamacharya Yoga Mandiram, Chennai. Yeah. Uh, Ashtanga schools in uh, my school. I was like, I was not a very, uh, I was not stuck to one system of practice. Right. You so, like you by nature like to explore things. Yes. So I uh, studied um, uh, 
um, Iyengar. So in this 10 years you were also exploring yoga. Your focus was like mainly shifted to yoga or you were still exploring other things? My focus even today is uh, mostly human consciousness. Yeah. So yoga is one tool and for me. Where do you think you are in your journey in terms of uh, your personal development and personal self-realization or whatever is your... I think... Uh, I think realization is a big word for me yet. Yeah. I'm still knowing what all I am capable and I'm not capable of. Yeah. Working with my strengths and weaknesses every day. Wow. So what then you shifted to start your own yoga studio? Yeah, own yoga studio was like, uh, yeah, most of them ask this question, why you own yoga studio? <laughs> It was mainly a lot of students of my uh, students wanted to learn different things yeah. because I, they used to have a glimpse of it uh, in yeah, their classes so they wanted to learn that as a main style yeah. and also I think uh, I was not set to be with corporates this is the reason why I shifted most jobs a lot yeah. of jobs I was not set to be with uh, corporates and uh, I think and why is that? Why is that? It's like um, I don't know. I think it's uh, the industrial architecture by itself. You know, it's quite heavy, uh -huh. and I was quite a light person. Yeah, is it like suppressing your self-expression again, which you like? You yeah, but I couldn't teach uh, outside. I couldn't. Uh, do what I wanted, I mean, nothing bad in it. Yeah, it's a company should have a structure. Of course. Right, but uh, I couldn't teach what I want. Right. Uh, and uh, there I thought, you know, my expression was getting a little blocked. Right. So that was the result of uh, this uh, to study. To start your own studio? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I also noticed when I was taking classes from you, is you have a lot of emphasis on the traditional soul of the yoga, sort of like preserving that in a sense like teaching in a way that has a dip, that has a real yoga aspect with it, with the practice. And that kind of resonate with your own personal journey also. Mm -hmm. yeah. So take us forward like where you think now you are going with this uh, yoga studio and in your personal journey also. I'm not quite, I'm not very ambitious. Of course. So every time Medha and I sit, Medha is my partner, you know, so um, when we sit uh, to look at the accounts, we are always saying, it's okay if we all get our salaries. <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> so I don't think so. I'm a businessman. Yeah. I can't uh, be a businessman, but I think, you know, a little bit of it, I should try, learn and understand I'm doing that now. Okay. And uh, I think service is what I intend to do here. Yeah. When I do service to others, uh, I think I'll be serviced too. Yeah, that's beautiful. This is the... This is what I, this is my journey ahead. Yeah. So you, for you it's more of like uh, the freedom, if you can get your own freedom and then express yourself and then just serve other people, so that's like good enough for you. They will serve me back. <laughs> you get it back, for sure. In fact, I was talking to Meda before mm -hmm. and I asked, I asked her that, what do you like so much about uh, Sandeep? And she was just telling, and it was so true that the way she was telling is, the way you create this space when you're teaching and your genuine desire to share and to make, to generally, to genuinely sort of want other people to grow in this yoga and all, it is so visible mm -hmm. and it feels like so good and this is why I feel like a lot of people are drawn and very loyal to sort of your classes and it's amazing man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think for me now yoga 
has not just become yoga it's become life for me yeah. as in i can't see it just as a movement of hands and legs yeah or the body anymore mm-hmm. it changed you <laughs> it, it did yeah so so let's say i'm a beginner mm-hmm. i have never practiced yoga what would you suggest me to do where should i start and what should i do mm-hmm. because it is so hard to get like the right teachers currently because of the commercialization of yoga and all these things well uh, today a l- lot of things as you know is uh, externalized and if you have a certificate a good certificate yeah you are a good that teacher means nothing i would say, i mean yeah <laughs> you are a good certificate you are a good teacher <laughs> so i would say go to anyone surrender and practice yeah see how that makes you feel does it make you feel expanded stay if it makes you feel contracted move yeah just sort of explore explore i mean it, it's with everything isn't it yeah everything uh, if you say something it makes you feel expanded if it feels good then stay with it if it does not you have and to you have to experiment well, yeah. further yeah and i've been practicing yoga for almost 1 year now mm-hmm. with uh, like so many different places and i found that it's very different than other other physical exercises right it it, it isn't just about conditioning your body or like it's it works on a different aspect altogether like vitality i i noticed that i used to move like this now my posture is like this which is which in itself is like a very big change for me in a long term i also noticed my breath is like much deeper which is not very cosmetic changes but i can see like it it is like a fundamental change in the long run so how would you like compare this with yoga and all other options you have currently to have like a good physical health for example gym crossfit and all these things uh, i'd like to pick from your word you said uh, it's not like any other conditioning yeah i would say it's not conditioning of course it's not conditioning it's unconditioning yeah see we are very intelligent uh, from inside yeah we are wise from inside but stupid from outside mm. the over a period of time what we <laughs> add on to us is um uh, years of stupidity yeah. <laughs> we have baggage <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so with uh, yoga practice you uncondition that stupidity or uncover that stupidity to find the real you the wise you the yeah. intelligent you inside it's more of a i wouldn't say yoga is a workout for me it's a work in yeah so it's totally different it's totally different in that way but yes if you are not looking at the deeper aspect of anything you can see the grosser aspect of it and that's also good yeah the idea that people are getting drawn into yoga classes because you can sweat is also good because yeah. over a period of time it will it will push them this side by by itself self yes it's just the nature of it yes it's just keep you take you more deeper and deeper inside you and us talk a bit about the teacher training what you guys do how you guys sort of uh, uh, teach yoga in that teacher training the teachers training uh being in a few of it and leading it for quite some years now I think teachers training is just uh, my way of sharing it to others so that they can share it to others okay of teaching them how to share i mean what i know so that they can experiment it uh-huh. experience it and share it to someone else personal excellence is something that i am behind for quite some time yeah teachers training a teacher our teachers training is structurally um uh, placed to uncover personal excellence right to do things without uh, having to do it many more times or going back and change it to to be to have a maximum yield out of whatever you do yeah. in the shorter period of time so period. you have like a nice head start 
yeah. in the yoga. Yeah. That's right. So we have two uh, courses that we teach now, like many other uh, sh shalas. We have level one and level two. Level one is structured more around oneself. Okay. Uh, structured uh, around us so that we can uncover personal excellence. Yeah. And once you do, it will flow. Uh, you have to reach the place where you start sharing. Yeah. By That's nature, it. you will get there. That's right. So once you have something, you can share, isn't it? Yeah. Right now, we share many things. We share anger, we share <laughs> frustration, we share... Um, That's not sharing. <laughs> <laughs> That's like taking. But we do. Yeah, whatever we, we do have share. inside, we have to like... We share. Can't it's just by nature you have to share whatever inside you. That's right. So that's my idea of teacher's training. In the level two, we have uh, slight advanced practices. Uh, here, uh, you know, you look into yourself more deeply. Yeah. And uh, also share. Yeah. So it's more deeply and then you start to focus more on sharing part. And you, do you have like a daily classes also? That we have daily classes. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have uh, about uh, five classes every day. Yeah. And uh, uh, two, two of it is uh, a one and a half hour class yeah. taught by uh, slightly experienced teachers. Yeah, at the moment with you. At <laughs> the <laughs> moment with me, Medha, and stuff like that. So, uh, and uh, we have three other classes which are of one hour duration. Right. So mornings, mid mornings, and uh, evenings. So yeah. what's your experience? You did one month of classes here. So what's your experience of the class? My, my whole experience with yoga is like very new mm -hmm. because I just started one year back. Or before that I had some experience with meditation. But in this one year I tried like many studios. I was traveling so I get to like stay sometime in Rishikesh, sometime in Dharamshala, sometime uh, a lot of time in Bangalore. And I tried many studios. But I found it so hard to find a studio which is like not corporate, which is like more of the real yoga, where you're teaching with this uh, sense of giving and like you yourself following the yoga. And it is not like a physical exercise. In that regards, I would say like Amurta Bindu was one of the best thing I've been to. Thank you very much. And, and I found these classes that, that you guys take in the master class for almost two hours they flow so nicely, they feel like 10 minutes. <laughs> and I've been to yoga classes which like I wished <laughs> would end after like 10 minutes, just like get me out of here. But these things like, they're so natural and they, they're not so forceful and you kind of get into the place where you find some sort of relaxation, which is very different than like pushing yourself and stretching yourself and like getting into this conditioning shape. So for me, it was like a great finding. Thank you very much. Beautiful man. <laughs> okay, so today my guest was Sandeep. Hey man, it's so good to talk to you. Thank you very much. Hey guys, I'm Nitesh and I hope this video was helpful. So if you find this information useful, please subscribe, like or comment. And when you do that, it makes me feel so good. But then it also helps me to reach other people. And thank you very much for watching it.